everybody, I'm Don Ferguson and welcome back to another bomb ass episode of something new in the Teak Life Basement Bar. If you're new to the Teak Life platform, it's where we try, taste, and talk about and review spirit brands from all over the world. But here's the kicker, we do it from a consumer point of view because it's really all about the consumer. They drive the market, right? If nobody's buying it, they go out of business. Before we get to tasting and talking about something really unique, be sure to check out our digital media partner, Tequila and Spirits Magazine, where you can get a free magazine subscription. Also, I wanna say a big thanks to our other digital media partner, hashtag find the bird. Go over to Instagram, hashtag find the bird, and follow them. Let's get down to brass tacks, people. That was kind of a hint, I think, I don't, I don't know. I'm just making shit up, but we are trying something very unique in a sector that is truly, truly growing every day. Bam, gin. Yeah, we don't try gin as much as we'd like to, but that is a fact. This sector is completely taking off here probably because of snoop dogg and his weed infused no wait a minute, i don't think it's weed infused anyway today we are trying rabbit hole distillery and their bespoke gin this is something unique so let's roll the intro and talk more about it boom Ladies and gentlemen, Rabbit Hole Distillery, Bespoke Gin. We're gonna set it right there. Wrote a song about it, like to hear it, here you go. Well, this is a gin and we don't try a lot of gins on the platform. Now, it's not because I don't like gins, I don't know enough about them, but I'm an intoxicologist, people. I have been studying and learning a lot more about this juniper spirit that people are just going crazy about over the pond. Or is it across the pond? See, I already messed up. Damn it! Rabbit Hole Distillery is one of my favorite distilleries. They make some incredible products. They're bourbons. You've probably seen some other episodes where I tried them. Well, this is very unique and very different, but there is a whiskey twist with it. Let's start off with the gin. No, they don't produce the gin they're in, you know, Rabbit Hole Distillery. However, what they do is, I guess, really kind of cool. So they import this gin. It's a London Dry, and it's imported from the UK. Then what they do, now you can see, maybe you can't, let's just do the 3D back in 1952. It's got a color to it. That's because it is aged in barrels. So it's aged in their Boxer Grail rye whiskey barrels. So we mentioned Boxer Grail, but oh, wow, <laughs> look at that. Isn't that amazing? I just got shit hidden all over the place. But we want to talk a little bit about Boxer Grail because that's the barrels that this is aged in that give it this unbelievably incredibly nice color. So Boxer Grail is Rabbit Hole Distillery's Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey and it's 95% rye and 5% malted barley. Yes, you see the neck tag, but this doesn't even do it justice. They have won a ton of awards for this rye, so it's sealed, people. You know what's coming. You know a future episode is coming. It just gives it away. The barrels are really important. So as far as I know and understand, with all the Rabbit Hole distilleries, they're American white oak, they're brand new, but then what they do is they toast and char them. So you're really getting a complex flavor in their whiskeys, in their bourbons, and I don't know, maybe in their gins. But that toasting and charring is very unique and it really, really adds to the character of any of the juices that are in those casks. All right, so when they're done with box of grail, meaning they fill the barrels, they age it, they, they pour it into the bottles, what do they do with the barrels? Well, then they take gin that they get from the UK and they put that gin 
in those casks anywhere between eight and 12 months. I couldn't pinpoint it down, but that's what I was able to come up with about eight to 12 months. Interesting. Gin is a botanical based spirit. So there is a lot of different gins out on the market and they kind of make up their own recipes. They use different botanicals, fruits and stuff like that. This one from what I was able to kind of come up with, it is made from angelica, lemon peel, orris root, coriander, which is pretty typical, licorice, which I believe is the anise. I'm not the biggest fan of licorice, so I'm just, I'm just letting you know who knows where this is gonna go, and orange peel. This is 89 proof. You're a true gin connoisseur, enthusiast, sophisticate. You know barrel aged gin is not the norm, but it actually is becoming increasingly popular. I've seen quite a few out on the market and there's a lot of different flavors, aromas. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening in the gin industry with this being rested in whiskey barrels, especially a rye makes it really, really different. And it's becoming popular because you can sip on these gins and they have that oak and they're extremely popular in whiskey cocktails. The other thing about these barrels, what they do is they mellow the gin just a bit. Now this is 89 proof. I don't know how mellow it's gonna really be. It's probably not like a Barry Manilow song. It's gonna have something to it, but it adds a hint of spice and then that beautiful tint to the juice. London dry gin. What does what does dry gin actually mean? Well, it means that there are no added artificial flavorings. It's all natural from the botanicals and the rye should add a little bit of sweetness to it. Let's just move the camera. Let's you know the routine. We got to taste people. Pop. Little little pop, not a big pop. You know, I didn't want to show off these muscles and just break some glass off of it but we are going to be using a signature teak life tasting flute because i really don't know what you're supposed to taste gin in now if since this is barrel aged and you know it's a higher proof i think we're going to let it breathe and just aerate just a little bit wow look at that didn't break nothing while we talk a little bit about this beautiful bottle now you notice this bottle is very different than the signature rabbit hole distillery bottle I mean it beautiful absolutely gorgeous I really like this one and with gin it kind of fits in extremely well it's got an elegant engraved herringbone pattern uh, all around the bottle up on top bespoke gin rabbit hole distillery on the top it's really cool because it's got a gold coin that's embedded into the topper as well now on the label itself it has a batch number, a bottle number, 89 proof, you know, barrel finish, Louisville, Kentucky, all of that good stuff. But it also has a little emblem. And this little emblem, it actually says Amare et Opus, which means love and work. Now, if you know a little bit about the Rabbit Hole Distillery uh, story, Kava, I mean the owner, it's a whole love story. We kind of talked about it when we did some interviews with the Rabbit Hole Distillery digital brand ambassador, Adam, and it is just a phenomenal story. And just what they're doing is so unique. They love what they do, so they love work, right? Color, look at that. It is a very, very nice, this looks almost like a light whiskey. And I know when my wife saw it, she actually did think it was a whiskey. When I showed her, hey, look, we're trying a gin today. She's like, that's not gin. Yes, it is. We got into a big argument, I'm sleeping on the couch. So it is a light golden color. It's like straw, fields of gold, all of that amazing good stuff. It's, it's almost like honey. It looks like a light honey. With these tiers, obviously it's a high proof. So we're taking it at cascading. Now you're getting those legs just starting to drip down. I would, I would show you in the camera. It's not gonna pick it up. You just gotta take my word for it. Okay, I think it's breathed. Breathed? I don't know. 
Where the, oh, wow, holy shit, there is a lot going on. Now with, oh man, so I did three sniffs, okay, uh, of, of the juice, not of anything else, people, come on. And each one, I picked up something absolutely completely different. So with gins, if you're kind of new to gins, there's a heavy juniper forward smell uh, aroma on a lot of them. And that kind of ruined my experience back in the day. I'll just say it, I, I had Tangare and it was almost like drinking a Christmas tree. It was like that pine cone that hangs from your mirror and it turned me off from gin for a long time. I've really been jumping into experiencing a lot more gins and I do tend to like some that are fruitier, um, have a little bit more unique flavors, not so juniper forward. And then these barrel aged ones are just blowing my mind. So let's get into the nose. And you're getting a little bit of that juniper, some coriander right up front, but it is very subtle. It's nice and inviting. It's nothing that's just gonna remind you of the 400 days in a row that they play Christmas music on that local station. You know what I'm talking about. But there's citrus, there's there's honeysuckle. So you're getting those botanicals like elderflower, you know, a subtle nutmeg on it. From that barrel, you're picking up some oak. I'm picking up some, some citrus of like orange, man, lemon rind. Hmm, a little bit of pine. This, this is outrageous. There's just, there's just really an orchestra of aromas going on in this glass. And man, I, I bet if I used a, Glen, a Glencairn glass, it really would have accentuated this experience. And it really is all about the right glass. You use the right glass, even though this is a little bit concave, so it's inverted, it, it does allow it to funnel up. But man, a Glencairn would just do even even more justice to this but with this being a high proof it is not overwhelming on any ethanol uh whatsoever which is absolutely nice a lot of times you will get that get that pungent aroma of alcohol and i'm not getting any any of that i think we shall mm. so it's got a little bit of pepper on the on the finish so it's just warming up it's got a little bit of that spice i don't know if that is from the barrels it very well could be but right right off the bat i'm, I'm picking up a lot of botanicals a nice sweetness to it as well but lemongrass some ginger little sweetness of like honey which obviously the color is like honey but let's go in for the second one. That's where we pick up a little bit more. Wow, that's actually fantastic. Lemongrass, soft botanicals. I'm picking up that honey, like I said, a slight ginger. And I'm wondering if that ginger is the spice and I love ginger. Oh man, that's not a redheaded joke, I promise. I love ginger. Um. Whew, there's a lot going on. You get a nice sweet citrus. There is that little bit of pepper, but it's not overwhelming. I mean, for such a high proof, I would have expected it, but it's kind of toned down. I would have expected more. It's fruity. It's round three, come on, people. That orange is jumping out. There's like an orange. There's a vanilla. I don't know where the vanilla is coming into play, if it's some of those botanicals, if it's from the aging process in those casks, but that orange and vanilla, you remember those creamsicles? You know, you, you, you take your 50 cents, you run after the ice cream man, he'd go a couple of blocks longer just laughing. Well, that's what it kind of tastes like. It, it's got a little bit of that orange creaminess to it as well. The oak is coming through. Um, I don't want to say that it's super strong, but there is definitely an oak, uh, oakiness to it with some burnt caramel sweetness, a zesty orange. I'm already thinking, as I go in for four, I'm going to tell you a drink that you're going to, it's going to go well with. That really is phenomenal. So let's talk about it. You got whiskey, you got oak, 
You got orange, old fashioned. Has anybody made a gin barrel, a barrel aged gin old fashioned? And if not, I'm doing that shit tonight because it is just, this is really ex extremely, you know what? I can't even say if it's Teak Life approved yet. I gotta try one more, people. Boom, boom, we're just doing it. Teak Life approved. That really is phenomenal. If you are jumping into gins and you really don't want something that, you know, is really going to taste like Christmas in a cup, this is something that is for you, especially if you are a whiskey, bourbon, scotch drinker, even a tequila or mezcal. I'll tell you what, this is going to blow some people away. I don't know if they've won awards for this. I don't know much other than what we've talked about, but to me, it's absolutely exceptional now gin completely going crazy over the last year year and a half these three sectors have done incredibly well the ready to consume ready to drink cocktail you know the cans the barefoot wines in a can you know everything is going haywire in that industry and it's just taken off tequila is the second fastest growing sector as well becoming increasingly popular with every celebrity jumping into it and then you have gin my friends gin is seeing a surge over here in the america in the americas I almost said the americas anyway in the united states gin is doing extremely well as you're finishing your sips i've learned a lot about gin like i said i'm going to be talking and reviewing more gins in the future and gin like really got a rise in popularity in the 1600s that's when people started really drinking over in england across the pond you know and then in the 1700s there was like this gin craze people were going crazy and drinking gin probably because the water was shitty it was probably dirty dirt brown so they figured well i'm just gonna drink gin a lot of people became alcoholics and just over you know it it subsided you know it as it always does but back then it was just people were drinking gin like crazy and like i said over the last decade we've seen this resurgent especially overseas with gin it's always been popular but with all these new floral and fruity flavors of gin it's kind of came over here to the americas and people are drinking a lot more gin and i can just honestly see why this one from rabbit hole distillery bespoke gin is 100 percent tea life approved i really enjoy it this is one that i could 100 percent sip um maybe add a couple of droplets of water but i'll tell you what a gin and tonic or an old-fashioned maybe even make a manhattan with this and it'll be completely outrageous my glass is down to the down down so that wraps up another episode of something new here in the teak life basement bar bespoke gin do yourself a favor check it out give it a try let me know email me just give me a comment because i think it is absolutely fantastic yep as you can see i brought out the other bottle again because we have one at least one more tasting from rabbit hole distillery so make sure to follow teak life on instagram facebook and twitter where you can always see what's coming up in future episodes life's too short to drink bad liquor people choose wisely we'll see you on the next episode i'm going to make about 45 cocktails cheers <laughs> Oh, my God.